Now let's look at an example of propagating uncertainty using multiplication and division operations. Now, this formula is strikingly similar to the one for addition and subtraction, with one exception. We're using relative errors in the formula instead of absolute errors. And if you recall, a relative error is the absolute error divided by the magnitude of the measurement that is the relative error. So let's go through and do an example involving relative errors. And we do this when we have multiplication and division. Now, whenever I'm doing one of these problems, I always like to solve the problem without considering the error at all, right? I just want to see what steps I go through in order to get the result. And that will let me know what I need to do for the error calculation. Is it all multiplication division or are there some addition subtraction events in there? That's important when I'm propagating uncertainty. So it's often a good idea, even if you're calculating these on spreadsheets or other um, programs like that, until you get really familiar with propagating error or uncertainty, you may wish to write out just one of the calculations or sketch it out. And that might help you when you're using the, the software anyway. All right, so here's an example. 0.2734 grams of potassium chloride is dissolved in 100 milliliters of water and then 10 milliliters of that solution is pipetted into a 50 milliliter flask and it's diluted to the mark. All right, and then the question is, what is the concentration of KCl and the uncertainty in that concentration? Okay, so first let's determine what the concentration of the KCl is. And so we start off, we have our measurement in our grams. So we're going to use the molar mass of that to convert it into moles. And then we'll divide by the volume. You guys remember how to do calculations like this. Here's some dimensional analysis. Now, this is going to use the molar mass of KCl, which is 74.5513 grams. Now, you may notice that I have uncertainty values associated with the grams of KCl that has been weighed out, the volumetric flask, the pipette, and the second volumetric flask but I haven't included an error for the molar mass. And the reason for that is, generally speaking, when we're making solutions, weighing it out on a balance, something like that, most of the time, the error in the molar mass is small enough that we can ignore it. Um, that's not always the case, but usually when we're doing standard wet lab kinds of preparations that that might just be the case okay so initially this will calculate the number of moles we need to get it into molarity so I've got 100 milliliters that's 0.1 liters now I have molarity of my first solution then I'm going to do a little dilution uh, step on here so I'm taking 10 milliliters of it and I'm diluting it into 50. Now, if you haven't seen me do this before, the millis in this case will cancel, and so it doesn't really matter um, that they're not in liters, um, since they're, they're, what I would end up having is millimolar by multiplying by 10 milliliters on top, and then I would divide out by 50 milliliters, that would get us back into molarity so anyway sometimes you can do little tricks like that so 
So I've calculated that in the last flask we will have a concentration of 0 0.0073345 molar. And I've just added on uh, plenty of significant figures in here and we'll actually determine how many significant figures we have once we do our error calculation. So here we go. We need to add up all of these errors. Now you'll notice that every one of these um, steps in here is multiplication or division and so we just need to use this one formula here. We don't have to add in uh, we don't have any addition or subtraction events. All right, so first error. Uh, so that's 0 0.001, and then it's divided by 0 0.2734. So the error divided by the magnitude of the measurement, that's relative error, then we'll square that. And then we're going to continue on with all of the others. So 0 0.08 divide by 100 for our first flask squared plus, and then 0 0.02 over 10, square that plus, and then 0 0.05 over 50. squared, and then this whole thing is going to be square rooted. All right. So when I calculate this particular um, portion of the uh, expression, I'm getting 1.34 times 10 to the minus 7. In this case, I get 6.4 times 10 to the minus 7. I get 4 times 10 to the minus 6, and 1 times 10 to the minus 6. So you'll notice that these two measurements right here have a little bit lower error than those. So these are the ones that maybe we could improve on when we're designing a different method of doing this. Maybe not. I mean, these are pretty small errors, but since they are higher than the rest, that's an, an area that we could look at. Anyway, we add that up, take the square root, and I'm getting uh, 0 0.002400 for my um, relative error. Now, I have relative errors in here. This is a relative error. So in order to get an absolute error, I'm going to have to multiply my concentration by the, the relative error. That will get back out ab absolute error. So then I can actually report my plus and minus. So I'm going to do that right down here. And that's why I didn't immediately round this off to just one digit, because I'm going to use that number in a calculation. So I do this and I'm getting 0 0.00016. And in this case, I'm going to round that off to 2, so 0 0.00002. So I should write, let's see here, this answer the error is starting at this digit right here. And so I'm only going to report my concentration to that same digit up here, which is the fifth one. So I'm gonna round this number off to this digit because these other ones beyond that one are, are um, starting to become insignificant because now I have variability starting here. So, Let's look here. Seven three three plus or minus zero point zero 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 two. Um, and this is molar KCL. 
So I stop writing uh, significant digits once the error, once I've gotten to a, a digit that I'm not certain about. There's no point in writing additional ones. Some people do, and if you do, then you would want to write additional digits here. So one thing that some people might do is this. Um, and that's a five, so we might round that up to a five. And then plus or minus, and then they would write this. And then they would leave two digits and the error, so one eight. So we'd round that. So that way the end of this is the end here. And you may want to do that when you have fewer significant figures over here just to convey that. But this also lets people know that, well, really we know this digit okay, but this one's a little bit more suspect. But that's something that people do do um, occasionally.